And so after the challenge, he wrote me, didn't quite go to plan. And so I was very curious. What didn't work out? All he had to do was ride up Alta Zwift. I mean, what could go wrong? Coach Greg, and in today's video, a 50-year-old man outdoes Will Tennyson. As you know, Will Tennyson failed the E10,000 burn 10,000 calorie challenge twice. And so I thought, why not challenge Mark Lewis to see if he could beat Will Tennyson? And so I wrote him a DM and said, check out Will's video. You should consider doing this challenge. I think you can do it. And so he watched the video and lo and behold, the guy actually went and did it. And so we kept in contact. He was messaging me as he was doing this challenge and I thought he had it in the bag. But did he? And so stay tuned to find out how did he make out in the Eat 10K, Burn 10K challenge? A six and a half thousand calorie egg. I said, all for me. She said, no, you've got to share that unless you have good reason not to. I'm kicking Will Tennyson's butt in a 10,000 calorie challenge. Get your hands off my egg. And so you heard it here first. He's kicking Will Tennyson's butt in a 10,000 calorie eating and burn off challenge. And so planning out the strategy for this challenge, he wrote, I reckon starting on the bike at midnight and doing three or four hours followed by a day of running, rowing and Zwift and eating. And so I do think that was a great strategy. However, he decided to do it a little bit differently. At midnight, he started off by eating about a thousand calories and going to bed. Not the best strategy. The easiest way to do this is to start doing cardio as soon as possible. The slower and longer you do your cardio, the easier it's going to be. If you try to go really hard like Will Tennyson did, you're going to burn out really quick. But if you take your time, slow down your pace and go for a longer period, you're going to burn significantly more calories. And notice the hard and last time protein in the background. Now, I certainly hope that he would have taken GO2 Max, the main ingredient NMN shown in double blind placebo control studies to dramatically improve your cardiovascular performance. And so obviously, if you want more stamina, greater recovery, more endurance to burn more calories, more fat, well, NMN in GO2 Geo2 Max, this is a supplement for you. Click the link in the description, 10% off, use code GREG. Right, it's coming up for half past three in the morning. Uh, I'm rested a little bit, fueled. The good news though, have burnt a few hundred calories just by staying alive. And Mark Lewis explains this very well in detail. It's a highly educational video. I suggest you go and watch it. But some of the calories you burn in a day are not just the calories you burn through exercise, but also through your BMR, the calories you burn just for staying alive. Like in that song. And for a guy his size, close to 6'4", over 100 kilograms, he has a very fast metabolism. And so he burns 100 calories per hour not doing anything, just laying there, staying alive. And so he really only has to burn 7,600 additional calories. And considering he's a very big guy, has a lot of muscle, and he's in good shape, I really think he can do it. And so in the first hour and a half on the bike, he burns off close to 1,000 calories. He was taking his time, had a low heart rate, all the while consuming chocolates, which are in fact high calorie dense foods. And so if you're trying to bulk up, get in a lot of calories, you want to eat foods that are very high in calories. And so a great start. A 1,000 calories only in an hour and a half. If he continues at this pace, he's most certainly going to achieve his goal. Been walking for about 40 minutes, heading to the swimming pool. The problem is I'm big and heavy, which on the one hand is great for burning calories. And so I stand corrected. The guy's six foot six, 198 centimeters, 101 kilograms, 223 pounds. And so no wonder he burns off so many calories. Man's a giant. He's a foot taller than Coach Greg. And so he's going for a walk at a fast pace. But remember, it's slow and steady that wins the race. And he's off to go for a swim, but he says he hates it. That's a bad idea. When you're trying to do cardio, you need to enjoy what you're doing. If you hate swimming or hate running or hate cycling, then don't do it. Do the things that you enjoy. If you like what you're doing, you're much more likely to do it and continue to do it for a long time, which will in fact burn more calories. If I go running with Jen, I'll burn more calories than she does, but her body is just far better at taking a hard pounding than mine is. Little sus, little sus right there. We know what you did. Body taking a pounding, I caught you. Get your mind out of the gutter. Okay, that was a bit of a disaster. Uh, less than 100 calories before I realized I just hate swimming. And so he swam for about 10 minutes, burned 100 calories, said, what am I doing? I hate this. And so he was quick to leave, going on to something else. Again, a fast walk, going to burn slow and steady calories. And remember, he's got the entire day. Slow and steady wins the race. Now, if you're wondering, how is this big old lump 
possibly gonna beat YouTube fitness icon, Will Tennyson. I think I might just have the edge on him. And so how is he gonna beat him? Well, first of all, he's 10% heavier, so he's gonna burn 10% more calories by doing the exact same exercise. And second of all, which is much more important, cardio is the secret, the key to long-term and sustainable fat loss. I know you're thinking it's lifting weights, but it's not. When you're in great physical shape, you can do cardio at a faster pace than someone who's of average ability. And so if he goes and does an hour of hard cardio in comparison to you, he's probably going to burn double the calories. And because this guy's a cardio athlete, he competes in running races, cycling on Zwift and so on. He has tremendous cardio and so he can burn a lot of calories for a very long time. In comparison to Will, who is in fantastic shape, Will focuses more on lifting weights, not so much on cardio. And for Will, burning off 10,000 calories well that is an uphill battle but for Mark it quite literally could be a walk in the park you know for 24 hours straight now I love lifting weights absolutely love it we'll do it forever but it cannot compete with cardio and so despite the fact he's lifting heavy weights he's training hard in the gym it's not burning nearly the same amount of calories as doing cardio and so if you want to burn off a lot of calories and you think oh i went to the gym i did squats today it's not burning many calories this guy's an elite level athlete six foot six and 46 minutes he's only burnt 380 calories and that's including his bmr and in total i'm now on 3296 calories it just works look at cyclists runners swimmers and so he says cyclists post a picture of coach greg people laugh and say oh i love that joke how you showed coach greg he's a cyclist it's not a joke how is this a joke i'm literally a cyclist i literally ride my bike way more than i lift weights so am i not a cyclist you're calling me a bodybuilder yeah i used to do that but i am a cyclist who lifts weights 613 calories peanut butter and jelly or jam, as we say. Seems like a weird thing to put together. And so for Mark Lewis, toast with peanut butter and jam, like a peanut butter and jam sandwich, that is some weird concoction. One of my favorite foods. One of my all-time favorite foods. Who hasn't eaten this as a kid and as an adult? And in case you're wondering, I made it lower in calories. It's in the freaking cookbook. Of course it did. Made peanut butter. It's called peanut butter. Four times lower in calories. And so obviously he's eating regular peanut butter and jam. It's loaded in calories. But if you're on a diet, be careful. Peanut butter is so calorie dense. Not something you want to eat on a diet. I don't know if I like it because I'm really hungry. Or because it actually tastes okay. And so something wrong with his taste buds. Does anyone out there, even one person, not love a peanut butter and jam sandwich? What is wrong with him? I thought this meal, the big meal, the big burger in the middle of the day, packed in between all the exercise, I'd have to force it down. But I'm so hungry. And so many people state you can't exercise a bad diet. And so in reality, you probably can't. Well, you could, but how many of you can go out and do 10 hours cardio a day to burn off everything you're eating? He's eating a burger and fries. Burger alone has over a thousand calories. And for most people, that's taken a couple of hours of cardio just to burn off. And it took him, what, five minutes? And so please, if you're doing a lot of cardio, continue to eat healthy. Remember, low calorie dense foods, like in my cookbook, they're very filling, going to make it easier to lose weight. One of the problems that Will had was that he got his eating done fine. I'd rather be the other way around. I want to get the exercise done. Absolutely. You want to finish the cardio and then finish it off with some food. Does it make more sense to finish off the 10,000 calories and then have to go and exercise for multiple hours? Or do you want to finish off your exercise, relax, sit back, and then enjoy your meal? One hour. Well, that's the longest row I've ever done. I didn't burn many calories. 503. And so I've stated this before, rowing, it doesn't actually burn that many calories. You would think it would because you're using your whole body, but you're only as strong as your weakest link. And when you're rowing, you use a lot of your lower back. And for most people, it's very hard to go hard for an hour. I've never rowed for an hour and I don't want to. It would be very difficult. This guy does a lot of rowing and he burned only 500 calories in an hour. And that's including the 100 calories he's burning from staying alive. And so much easier to do the cardio that burns more calories. For him, it's most likely cycling as he's used to it. But please do the exercise that you love the most. And he's now out running. Running very hard on your knees and your joints. Very difficult to maintain your gains if you're lifting weights in the gym. If you're doing running. And so I caution you, if you do in fact love running and you want to build a lot of muscle, if you do both, it's not going to be as easy for you. Give me a projected total for the day of 9,100. 
and 99. It is now in the bag. And so he says it's now in the bag. He only has to burn off 800 extra calories. He's got plenty of time. He's going to ride up Alp the Zwift. And so he messages me four hours till midnight and less than 1,000 to go. Alp the Zwift time. The food part was easy peasy. And so I was judging at a bodybuilding competition. I didn't have time to write a long message. I wrote, you got it in the bag. And so after the challenge, he wrote me, didn't quite go to plan. And so I was very curious. What didn't work out? All he had to do was ride up Alp the Zwift. I mean, what could go wrong? Alp the Zwift, pretty much the biggest mountain in Zwift. Might be overkill for the calories I need, but it has a special place in my heart. And so he decides to ride up Alp the Zwift, which is further than he needs to ride. Oh, 10,000, I'm just gonna keep going. And so he continues to ride, burns off an additional 400 plus calories. And not only that, He's racing, sprinting to do it as fast as possible. Remember, the guy's been exercising all day and decides to race up a mountain. Uh, left calf keeps cramping. Feel like I'm going to pass out and fall off the bike. Other than that, it's all good. And so his legs start cramping, but why slow down? Why take my time? I'm going to listen to David Goggins. Stay hard. Harder than last time. Stay hard. And so instead of going harder than last time up the bike, he should have just took harder than last time the pill. I mean, we're racing up a mountain after doing cardio almost literally for an entire day. And so he literally is sprinting up the end of this mountain. He doesn't do it in the time he wants. He does it a bit slower. But did he have to? It's a 10,000 calorie challenge, not a race up a mountain. Three minutes past 11, 10,409 calories. And so he's at 10,409 calories, but yet he continued to ride up that mountain. Could have got off the bike half an hour early and said, yay, and started to eat. But no, I need to race up a mountain. I am starving hungry, but I've also got this, like a weird shivery thing going on as well. And so he says he's starving hungry. He's starving. Remember, he still has to finish the 10,000 calorie challenge. And he's shivering. The guy just burned off over 10,000 calories. He burned off more than he literally had to. And so one thing I'd strongly recommend, Perilite, which is an intra workout, something you can take to stay hydrated or to recover. Make sure you have plenty of electrolytes and water so that you don't get dehydrated. As think of it, you've been exercising, sweating, losing weight all day long, and you're starving. You need to eat, replenish, and stay hydrated. And so anyone out there doing extensive amounts of cardio, you need to take Perilite. It is now almost 48 hours since I failed the 10,000 calorie challenge. Things did not go to plan in the kitchen that night. And so two days later, he admits he failed the 10,000 calorie challenge. He wasn't able to complete the eating. But how? He literally had an hour left. All he had to do was eat about 1,000 calories. How could he go wrong? I began by making myself a delightful avocado and mayonnaise dip. And then I felt unusual. Then I lay down. And then a large number of muscles throughout my body began to cramp. I had a Garmin stress chart that indicated I should just walk towards the light. And so he's saying the Garmin stress chart telling him to walk towards the light. And quite literally, doing a challenge of this magnitude and not doing it safely, it's dangerous. He barely slept the entire night. His entire body was cramping up, seizing, and he wasn't able to continue to eat. And thankfully, his family is home because you never do know what could happen. Uh, don't underestimate fluid and electrolyte loss. I went from 101 to 94.5 kilos. And so during this challenge, he lost over six and a half kilograms. That's nearly 15 pounds. And listen, dehydration, it's very dangerous to lose this amount of fluids. Your body can cramp up, seize up. And so he simply negated to stay hydrated. You can't sweat all day long, not replenish the fluids and think your body's going to be okay. And don't celebrate too soon or you might end up looking a little bit silly. And so he did in fact celebrate four hours before he messaged me and I'm like, congrats, you got this in the bag, but he didn't complete the challenge. And so for him, actually eating the 10,000 calories ended up being harder than burning the 10,000 calories off. But looking back, all he had to do was stop 400 calories sooner, consume more fluids, stay hydrated, not sweat out all those important electrolytes. He could have relaxed, gotten off the bike, had an extra 30 minutes to eat the food he needed and have successfully completed the challenge. But on the positive side, I did demonstrate that burning calories is much harder than eating them because the only reason I stopped eating them was the shutting down of my body 
caused by burning them. Thankfully, he's okay. I guess we'll technically got to call it a tie. Even though he completed the 10,000 calorie challenge, he wasn't able to eat the calories. Interested in GO2 Max, the cookbooks, creatine supplements, bars, all that, head over to my website. And don't forget, code Greg, it saves you 10%. If you have no money, head there anyway. You get a free diet and training program. It's over 50 pages. Enter your first name and your last name and your email address. Voila, it comes right to you. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Like this video if you liked it. Watch one of the bloops. Doesn't matter which one. Follow me on the gram. It's Greg Doucette, IBB Pro. And until next time, I am out.